Now you might be wondering, while I'm shooting these videos, uh, who's steering the boat? Uh, and the answer is it's not who's steering the boat, but what's steering the boat. And what is steering the boat, or at least part of it, is right behind me. You can see that plywood air paddle. That's a self-steering wind vane. Um, and what that is doing is keeping the boat at a constant angle to the wind. Right now we're broad reaching, so the wind is about 130, 140 degrees. Um, off, off the bow. Um, and so you can see that air paddle is pretty much holding at the same angle um, and it's keeping the boat sailing at, at a constant angle to the wind. Um, now, the air paddle itself could never create enough torque to actually move the rudder. Um, and if you can see this long lever here, this is the tiller here, I'll move the camera down. So you can see this long lever here is the tailor, and it, it requires a fair bit of lump when the water is uh, when you have the water pressure on it to actually move that tailor, move that rudder. And there, there's no way an air paddle could ever develop enough force to do that. So the air paddle is not actually turning the rudder. What it's turning is a trim tab, which is a long, thin, high aspect ratio rudder or blade that is mounted on the end of the rudder. Essentially what that does is it gives the air paddle a huge amount of mechanical advantage. It basically acts like a long lever over the rudder. So in that way the air paddle is able to turn the rudder. And in fact the trim tab can oversteer the boat, can move the rudder too much. Uh, and that's why I have these shock cords attached, which are attached to either side of the tiller, uh, which prevent oversteering. Otherwise you tend to start sailing a slalom course. One of the wonderful things about a boat with a stern hung rudder like this one, uh, where this rudder is just attached by a couple of big hinges uh, to the stern and the end of the keel, and those big hinges are known as pintles and gudgeons, um, is that you can simply add a trim tab type self steering vane. Um, and it's, it's very simple and it's also uh, inexpensive. I built this myself. Cost of materials was maybe $200 or so. Um, however, if you don't have a stern hung rudder, if you have an inboard rudder where the rudder is being controlled by a shaft that's going down to the bottom of the hull, uh, there's no way to uh, rig up this sort of a wind vane. So what I'd recommend is if you have an inboard rudder is to get an off-the-shelf servo pendulum type vane. Uh, such as the monitor wind vane. Uh, those work very well. I know people who use them and uh, like them a lot. You might be wondering, what about autopilots? Uh, most boats, uh, especially boats that are more recently built, will have, um, will have built-in autopilots. Uh, there's no question an autopilot is a lot more convenient than a, than a uh, self-steering wind vane. Basically, you just put the boat on the course, punch a button, and uh, there you go. Um, However, there are downsides to autopilots. Uh, one downside is, of course, they're continuously using electrical power. And on a boat like this, where I depend on solar panels for my, uh, for my electrical power, um, I might not be able to produce enough electricity and uh, it could cause my batteries to run down. Nonetheless, I know people who use auto, exclusively use autopilots for ocean passage making. They work. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily knocking that angle. However, I would, I would recommend that if you plan to do a lot of ocean sailing, uh, to buy a self-steering wind vane, even if it is just a backup for your autopilot.
see that this is the galley area here and you can't quite see right in the foreground here there's a couple of sinks and, and a water pump. Uh, here we have a two burner propane stove it has an oven underneath um, and here we have an ice box. Well it used to be an ice box I converted it into a fridge some years ago. Um, so to answer the question as to what I eat, well it depends on two things really. It depends on how many days we are into the passage and it also depends on the weather. So today we have good weather and we're only one day into the passage and uh, it's, this is, uh, it's about 7.30 in the morning so I'm going to have cereal for breakfast and I got some fresh milk down there in the fridge and uh, so we're relatively speaking in the lap of luxury here. Um, I'm also uh, drip brewing some coffee here. Um, I have down in here, I have some leftover teriyaki chicken. Uh, I have some fried chicken. Uh, and I even have a little leftover spaghetti. Um, so that will last me for the next three or four days. Um, after that, then generally we move on to processed food. It's going to be canned chili over rice or uh, um, uh, soups. Uh, Chef Boyardee um, uh, and all, all that one, or macaroni and cheese. Uh, so generally the quality of the food goes down as the passage, uh, as we get further and further into the passage. Okay, so here we are, about to begin our fourth night at sea. As you can see, it's uh, actually an unusually pleasant night tonight. Pleasant evening so far, so we're dining out on the patio here eating up, uh, well, it's almost the last of the teriyaki chicken. Chicken teriyaki sauce, broccoli mushrooms on rice, and enjoying a nice cold beer. Uh, fresh food is just about, uh, just about running out here. Got a little more chicken teriyaki, a piece of fried chicken left, and then uh, we move on uh, to processed food. How exciting. And even more frighteningly, we're down to our last three cold beers, so pretty soon this is going to become a dry ship. But anyway, we enjoy it while it lasts. There'll be more when we get into port. And it provides motivation to sail this boat more quickly. So what we were just listening to is the uh, U.S. Coast Guard uh, weather offshore weather forecast, November Mike November, which broadcasts on Upper Sideband. Uh, this here is a little uh, uh, is a little uh, HF FM radio, uh, which also has a single sideband discriminator. Um, and all I'm doing here actually is just taking the antenna and touching it to the shroud plate so uh, so one of my shrouds acts as an antenna for picking up sh um, high frequency of a short wave. Um, so what we just heard here is the forecast for our area. We're presently at about 22 degrees 30 minutes north and about uh, 67 degrees west. So the last forecast we heard was for 22 to 27 north and 65 west of the Bahamas. So as you can see, this is, uh, this is only giving us a general idea. But throughout the entire forecast um, time from today all the way until Saturday for this area, it's basically light to moderate southerly winds, 10 to 15 knots, which is pretty much what we have now. So that's good. Ahoy! It is Thursday, June 8th, and we got all kinds of excitement going on out here. We got a couple of rain squalls creeping up, uh, uh, creeping up behind us. Looks like they're going to go the east of us, but you never know with those things. Uh, and we've also spotted two other vessels. I haven't seen any other boats so far since leaving Calabra. Uh, so we are presently at. 25 degrees 34 minutes north and 68 degrees 22 minutes west. Uh, we've slowed down a little bit. Uh, we only covered about 90 miles in the past 24 hours. Um, 
And that's mainly because the winds have uh, been sort of oscillating between uh, southerly and southeasterly, which means we're pretty much going dead downwind. And I'm not really able to sail this boat dead downwind. Uh, so what I do is I tack downwind. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is that I want to try to keep the staysail filled. And what will happen is when you try to sail a boat uh, too far off the wind is the mainsail will begin to blanket the uh, foresail. So let me just try to demonstrate that here. So we're sailing about 150 degrees to the wind, but if I, if I try to head off more than that, see what will happen is the staysail will lose its wind. It'll begin to flop around a bit because the mainsail is blanketing it. Uh, the, the staysail is just in the eddies of the mainsail. Um, and so not, not only is it uh, flopping around and making an annoying noise, and it's also bad for the sail, but we're also losing power. Uh, so the boat is slowing down. Uh, so what we were discussing is that what you can do is just sail at a wide enough angle to the wind, as wide as you can, um, but without letting that happen. And generally, that for most boats, that's around 150, 140 to 150 degrees off the wind. And so that way you can sail downwind. But of course, if your course is directly downwind, directly in the direction that the wind is flowing, then you're going to have to tack downwind. Uh, so if you're sailing at 150 degrees to the wind, uh, you, you're going to have to jibe from one tack to the other, and you're going to jibe through an angle of 60 degrees. So you're going to be sailing a zigzag course downwind, uh, just as you do when you're sailing upwind. Since no boat can sail directly into the wind, you have to sail at an angle to the wind, zigzag back and forth. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, except of course you're covering more distance, so it's going to slow you down. Um, now, one strategy for sailing directly downwind with boats such as these is you can, uh, you can haul the clue, which is the trailing corner of your head sail, out on a whisker pole, which is just a pole that will hold it out on the windward side of the boat. Uh, so now what you'll have is you'll have the mainsail on one side and the headsail on the other side out on a pole. That's what's called going wing and wing. And that way you can sail directly downwind. And now one thing I find with this boat, uh, and every boat is different, is that without that sideward pressure, air pressure on the mainsail, which comes from having at least some component of the wind coming across the boat, is that this boat will roll excessively. So even though with a whisker pole I might be able to have both sails filled and make decent progress downwind, uh, the rolling is going to make life aboard uh, rather uncomfortable. Um, so I, I prefer to tack downwind, uh, keep it comfortable, and we're moving nicely through the water, and uh, put up with maybe covering, advancing a little more slowly toward our destination. Now, of course, finally, um, in, in lighter conditions especially, the fastest way to go downwind is to fly a spinnaker. Um, the only downside of a spinnaker is that uh, they can be tricky to handle, uh, especially when you're, when you're uh, single-handing. And uh, God forbid you get caught in a, in a heavy squall with one of them up. Uh, so anyway, that's it for today. Um, as you can see, nice weather has returned, and the nice weather is holding out so far for this passage. Uh, there's, uh, there's bad weather up north. Uh, that low pressure is presently at 33 north and 77 west, and it's tracking off to the northeast, off and away from us. Um, so that's it for today, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.